we'll be talking to him. But right now we have John Webster, uh, an analyst extraordinaire, and uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, David. So, uh, first of all, tell us a little bit about the Evaluator Group. Um, we have uh, two sets of clients, uh, end user clients um, and vendor clients. We do basically storage comparative analysis. Uh, we look at uh, various storage devices, storage arrays, storage infrastructure, storage software, um, line them up, compare them, report those results uh, typically to end users who engage us uh, when they want to make a major acquisition and need some due diligence um, uh, from an independent source to size up the acquisition. So what are you going to tell your uh, end user clients about this announcement? What's your angle? What's, what's my angle? You know, it's, it's interesting. Um, I'm trying to figure out which came first, um, storage virtualization or server virtualization. Um, you could make the case that uh, the mainframe uh, did server virtualization first, but you know, really after that came storage virtualization, and then we saw this huge uh, uptick of uh, VMware and uh, the virtualized servers. And it's kind of funny that um, what's um, sort of propelling the interest in storage virtualization, witness uh, the three-par uh, acquisition, um, is actually server virtualization. And now you have tremendous interest in storage virtualization. The angle here really is Hitachi's been in this space for years. I mean, they've been doing this for a long time. Uh, and I think they get this. I think they know how to do this. Aren't you surprised? I know I, I was, but I wonder if, if it's just maybe because I'm out of touch, but that you, more, Dave, no way. <laughs> thank you. But m that, that <laughs> with server virtualization, that more back-end storage isn't virtualized than, for instance, VMware uh, op operations. Does that, did that surprise you, or does that surprise you? No, because I think, you know, it's, it's hard to get away, e even if you do um, server virtualization, it's still, I think, difficult to, w to get away conceptually from the, you know, server storage sort of stack. Mm -hmm. Right, and typically that's been uh, managed um, in, in a way that sort of promotes that. In other words, you have management groups that concentrate on servers and storage and networks as separate functions. Right, so when you start, let's say, looking at uh, management of a virtualized uh, server environment in a more holistic way, then you get some of this blending and and um, let's say cross-pollinization and, uh, you know, um, people like uh, s server vendors buying, or uh, server uh, administrative groups being much more involved in um, storage decisions and looking at uh, consolidating storage um, from a server perspective. Do you see those silos uh, uh, coming together uh, or getting broken down in your, your end user customer base or are we still a ways away from that? Uh, it's starting to happen now. It is. I mean, we see, we see evidence of it now. Um, we have uh, storage groups uh, that are becoming much more conversant in networking. Yeah. Which is interesting because that you know, the are the, are the, the storage, storage guys group are they going to the work for the networking guys, guys or <laughs> it's probably not going to be the reverse. Didn't work together right? better, uh, so, yeah. but anyway, it's uh, it's it's getting better. Uh, is there a, um you know one of the things that Hitachi has always done really well, as you know, is they they virtualize third party storage arrays. Is there a financial angle or an asset management angle there, or is that more of a just a clever? Well, I think there the absolutely is, but you have to think of um, of. Um, acquisition alternatives to get there. In other words, if you're just thinking about capital acquisition, it doesn't really do much for you. Uh, but if you think about uh, leasing um, and not taking ownership um, in infrastructure, then things can be very creative. Um, it's possible, for example, to bring in a platform like VSP um, on a lease and you could actually buy out the underlying third-party um, storage and include that in the lease also. And now you have sort of a cloud um, storage platform, if you will, um, that you pay for monthly. Right, so the shift of that whole CapEx to op OpEx Absolutely. mindset. Absolutely, and, and, and you can drag along um, storage that you've already bought. Uh, the leasing can company can just come in and buy that off uh, your books and include that in the lease and now you've got 
uh, capital that you could throw at lease payments or, 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 or other projects. Let's talk a little bit about VSP in the marketplace. It's com- you're seeing a completely different philosophy than, say, the major competitor EMC with, with VMAX, you know, scale out and, 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 and really focused on those high-end mission-critical applications. We heard a lot today about scale out, scale deep, um, and scale up. Uh, and then this, this cloud, this sort of content cloud, mm-hmm. um, that's sort of new positioning for, for Hitachi. What do you make of that, um, that, whole, that, that whole differentiation between, let's say, the classic you know, EMC symmetrics and, and what Hitachi's now talking about? How much of that is real? How much of that is, is vision, in your opinion? Um, so I'm still, honestly, Dave, I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, you know, there is something to be said for, in a way, Hitachi reintroducing um, the virtualization uh, platform in a way because um, EMC customers have not really heard uh, EMC talk much about virtualization. Now they are, right? With so Vplex and Yes, and exactly. Right. Um, and so it makes that discussion, I think, very real for EMC customers. Um, Hitachi is here with a platform that's an alternative, so it's an interesting play for Hitachi to sort of, in a way, reintroduce um, the virtualization uh, platform that they have and add to it um, you know, some attributes that they think are unique uh, uh, in the marketplace. How much of that they can actually deliver right now after listening to Jack DeMay's speech, that, that's an open question for me. But don't you think, I think, I mean, I'll, I'll give you my opinion and I'd like you to comment. I mean, I think that the VPlex announcement was really um, sort of confirmation of a lot of the things that Hitachi has popularized, maybe IBM's SVC as well, and EMC's, obviously EMC has never done a Me Too, right? Or maybe they have, but they, they very rarely do a Me Too. They're trying to market a much broader vision. But I see that as confirmation that storage virtualization is, you know, a major trend. Do you oh, agree? no question, yeah. no question. I mean, you know, to e- EMC customers, Virtualization isn't real until EMC says it's real. So now it's real for them. It hasn't seemed to hurt EMC over the years, though, has no. it? It's quite amazing. Um, okay, so talk a little bit about, um, you know, I want to switch gears a little bit. And we were at Oracle Open World last week. Okay. And you heard, uh, were you there? I wasn't, unfortunately. I am, I'm regretting not uh, having been there. Well, you know, I kind of have mixed emotions about it. I mean, it was a very weird vibe. You, you were at VMworld? Yes. Yeah, so VMworld was really open. It was kind of like Woodstock, a lot of love going on. At Oracle Open World it was very closed and controlling. And, and I get the feeling that Oracle just really wants to own the world, even though it probably recognizes that it, that it can't. Much different vibe than what you're hearing from Hitachi, isn't it? Oh, uh, yes, I would say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Although, you know, it's interesting that you should say that because... I've been doing a lot of work on uh, things like the Green Plum uh, acquisition from EMC and looking at where they're going with uh, Green Plum versus even an announcement like this. And, you know, part of this is on one side you have, let's say, a camp that says you sort of have to own the data in order to manage it and control it and do all the things that Hitachi is saying you have to do with it. And in the green plum world, you don't necessarily have to own the data. You, you can, you know, build pipes to the data without actually owning it. Mm. And that's an, that's an interesting model. Yeah, it is an interesting model and, and, and one that is quite viable for Hitachi to compete on. Um, t- let's talk a little bit about um, big data. I mean, we're, we're hearing the content cloud and the unstructured data and the unification. I'm very impressed with that message. I'm not hearing a lot on, on big data. Do you think that's a, a missing piece here? Could be. Yeah. Could be. Right now, big data is sort of pigeonholed into uh, business analytics. Mm-hmm. And business analytics looks like an outgrowth of data warehousing, which is sort of a niche application, I think, uh, or at least regarded in a way in the storage industry as a niche application. I, I actually think it's a much bigger opportunity. Yeah, and but uh, you know, in classic Hitachi fashion, they're going to focus on their strengths. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. And, and you're starting to now see the archivist stuff seep through. So I actually think there's a lot of potential with this whole content. Yeah, plan. yeah, I do too. Yeah. I, I I think so. Um, I, you know, the the thing though is that Hitachi can't take a, a heavy iron uh, approach to this because the competition is not heavy iron. So do you think Hitachi can compete with the so-called 1.5 players? I mean, that's clearly what VMAX was all about, was this hybrid thing, competing with the, the likes of 3PAR and, and others. Um, do get, does Hitachi have the cost structure in this new platform to do that? It, it, it potentially could. Yeah. Um, it, it potentially could. It depends on uh, really how they structure it uh, for end users. Again, 
um, if if you structure this as um, as usage as opposed to ownership, um, then it gets much closer to the cloud model. Um, you know, in terms of how you acquire it as an end user. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you can avoid a lot of the upfront cost uh, by simply paying for what you have over time as you use it, um, I think you get around uh, a lot of those issues that are created by capital acquisition. We're here with John Webster of the Evaluator Group, a longtime analyst in the, in the storage and, and infrastructure business. John, l my last question is, um, is really around advice for, for users. What, what advice would you give to your, to your end user clients around this whole, you know, for those trying to figure out, you know, what do I do with my storage platform and what about all this cloud stuff and w what advice would you give them? Hmm. Well, I, I think a lot of users, I think, are at the point where they're trying to figure out what's the best storage match for a virtualized server environment. Right, and so the advice I would give is to size up the competition uh, based on, you know, that kind of environment. You know, look at who's uh, integrated uh, uh, best with uh, VMware or um, Citrix or uh, Hyper-V, depending on, you know, what your flavor is. Um, and, you know, who's got the relationships, who uh, can best... Um, sort of deliver to you um, as a user in this holistic management environment that we're seeing uh, users uh, progress to, you know, who can be the best for the entire um, th group that's managing not only servers, uh, but networks uh, and storage as well. And the evaluator group uh, obviously can, can help you do that. You guys are, are one of the best, if not the best, out there at taking all this bog of information and putting it into really easy to utilize uh, tools so that users can make those Thank decisions. Thank you, David. We, uh, we definitely believe yeah, that. And you worked hard at it, and you've you got a m many years of history doing it. So well, we, uh, we started doing this in 1997, so yes. Yeah, so, um, well, John Webster, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. It was great to have you. Thank you, David. All right.